Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the 10.15. We will um, start to get going. Should we give you 30 more seconds to grab yourself a seat? To, 30 um, seconds. Come on down. Grab a seat. Bring your coffee. Bring, bring your uh, pan of chocolate. It wasn't that. Brioche. Sorry. Chocolate studded brioche. Belgian single origin, I believe. Wow. That's not true. Brilliant. <laughs> Welcome to St. Swithens. It's great to see you this morning. My name's Vicky. My name is Ben, and it's great to have you with us. If it's your first time being here, you're very welcome. If you're a regular, great to have you here too. As we continue celebrating Easter, Jesus is risen. Woo! They're listening. Brilliant. We're going to be continuing our series of um, The Way. We've been looking at different ways that we can connect with Jesus, that we can know more of him in our lives. And we were looking at that through Lent. Then last week, we looked at Easter Sunday. And then this week, we're thinking about walking with Jesus. So as we come out of um, Lent and as we're into Easter, and as Jesus is risen, we're going to walk alongside him. And we'll be thinking of that this morning. So um, you can be getting your feet into gear as we think about walking with Jesus. But let's stand as we begin to prepare our service as we come to God in prayer. So I don't know where you've been this morning, whether it's been a rushed morning, a busy morning, or whether you've been able to take your time a bit because it's the holidays. But um, let's come to God as we are and offer him what we've got this morning. Let's pray. So risen Christ, for whom no door is locked and no entrance barred, open the door of our hearts that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God the Father. Amen. Well, we're going to worship together with our first song, which is the house of the Lord. There's some actions to this song, so do follow me for the actions, or if you want to come and grab a flag or a ribbon, if you're very small, then do do that, and let's worship together. We worship the God who wants we worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes the way. Cause he hung up on that cross. And he rose up from the grave My God still rolling stones away There's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place We won't be quiet We shout out your praise Shout out your prayer. We were beggars. Cause we were beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing prayer. We were beggars. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty, we were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace, at the house of the Lord's sacred. 
There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can gather and worship you, our risen Lord, our Savior, the one who walks with us, beside us, and before us. And as we worship you, we remember that truth. As we raise our hallelujah to you, our joyful voices, because of all you've done for us. Amen.
take a seat. Well, we're thinking today all about walking alongside Jesus, and we're going to be looking at a story where his disciples walked with him, and as they walked with him, they um, recognized who he was. Now, I don't know about you, but in our family, when we go for a walk, I generally find out lots about someone. In fact, when I go for a walk with my son, I find out lots about football, probably too much (laughs) more than I wanted to know. But um, we're going to play a game this morning where we reveal facts about a character and you have to try and guess who it is. Now, looking around, it's definite sort of Easter holiday, um, sort of quiet and calm this morning. So, love to get us moving. So, um, as I reveal (laughs) facts about my, we've got one each, haven't we? As we reveal facts about our person, I'll go first. If you think you know who it is, you need to stand up. And I think we'll have a bit of a healthy competition and we'll see whether my side or whether Ben's side can be uh, standing. The most people can be standing by the end of the thing, okay? No cheating, because we might come and pick on you, and if you get it wrong, that's it. The whole side's out. I just made up that rule right now. Just made up that rule. But I I agree. It's going to be cheating going on, isn't it? Bye-bye. Okay. So I'm going to reveal facts one at a time about my person and uh, see if you can guess who it is. So if you think you know who they are, stand up. This character that I have chosen is generally loved by children. (laughs) You're not confident. Oh, hello. You know that if you get it wrong, your whole side's out. I'm with... Wow. Okay. Shall we ask them now? No, because... No, I'm not going to ask you yet, but nobody's going to talk to you, and if we ask you by the end... I'm going to keep it clocked, though. This character has a brother. Oh, Yeah? Confident? Confident, James? I don't think you are. This character lives on a hill. You absolutely... Whoa! Whoa! Gosh, that really... Oh, wow. Loads of you think you know who it is, okay? This character, this is the one that's going to give it away. Paula just stood up then. She was like, I totally know this. (laughs) Go on, Paula. This character loves jumping in muddy puddles. Moji was like, I knew that all along. I knew who that person was. You had it from the start. Uh Rachel, you know me so well. You knew exactly who I'd choose. There's some people who they haven't got any little children in their lives and they're like, what are you talking about? I don't blame you. Last one, this character is a pig. No, you can't. That's in the name. That's okay. That's okay. There's still some there who are like, absolutely not. So uh, I'm not sure. (laughs) Yeah, all right. Um, Rachel, who was it? Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig. We don't actually know whether you had... James, did you have that from the start? Oh, yeah, you did. Okay, I declare this side the winner. Yeah, it's the winner. Why did you say that, James? We could have lied. Yeah, sit down. Sit down Uh. again. Let's... uh... Oh, you should write it on your phone. You've got paper and pen in front of you, yeah. Right, everybody. My side. This character loves lobster thermidor. Like, I seriously wouldn't have got this. Ben's told me who it is, and I'm still not sure. Vicky's Vicky's right in there. Oh, Okay, my side. If you want to lie. What do you think? My character... What? That person's got it right. Uh, they just mouthed it to me. Vicky, Vicky's already got it. That's incredible. My character loves the big city. Loves lobster okay. thermidor and a big city. Should we ask? Uh, I just really want to know if they've got it. Shall I go and find out? Uh, no, I'm going okay. to ask them at okay. the end. Okay. Uh, my character loves money. Lobster Thermidor, cities, money. This is really hard now that I've Yours said it out loud. Yours is harder, definitely. Sorry, uh, my character loves gadgets. <laughs> Don't shout after that at the <laughs> So Lobster Thermidor, big city, money, gadgets. My character loves bats. Well, it's an interesting relationship with bats. <laughs> <laughs> it's questionable. Wow. That, that got a few moving on this side. Well, the answer is Batman. 
Did you have it from the start, Hilly? Yeah, two people. Who got three, it from Lobster Thermidor? Had it from Lobster Thermidor. Yeah, here. Lego Batman. Wow. Brilliant. Incredible. So your well, side wins. I'm good, Sid. Yep. Well, we are going to watch our Bible reading. It's from the Gospels. It's um, a story where Jesus is walking alongside his disciples and then they recognize who he is. Just like you recognize those characters, um, they recognized who Jesus was and it changed them. Let's take a look. Stories of the Bible, the road to Emmaus. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. But some people did not like what Jesus was doing and they put him to death. He died on a cross and was buried in a tomb. For three days, Jesus' body laid in that tomb, and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body, found that his tomb was empty, and that he was no longer there. For he was risen. He was alive. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to a village called Emmaus and talking about everything that had happened with Jesus. As they were talking, Jesus suddenly came and walked with them. Oh, hello. But God kept them from recognizing Jesus. Jesus asked them what they were talking about. The two men were very sad. One of them, whose name was Cleopas, said, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there in the last few days. Uh. Jesus asked, What things? The men replied, The things that happened to Jesus. And they began to tell Jesus about everything that had happened to him. They told him that some women had gone to his tomb and said that his body was missing and that others had gone to see if it was true and saw that his body really was gone. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Oh, uh, let me explain. Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus, Jesus acted as if he was continuing on. Hey, wait! But the men begged him to stay the night with them because it was getting late. Come with us! Oh, okay. So Jesus went home with them, and as they sat down to eat, Jesus blessed the bread. Then he broke the bread and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were open, and they recognized Jesus. It's you! And at that moment, he disappeared. Where'd he go? The men said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he explained the scriptures to us? Come on! And that hour, they made their way back to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and the others who were with them and told them their story. I'm cut. Well, again, good morning, everybody. My name is Ben. I'm the associate vicar, and um, we're carrying on with the way of Jesus. And today we're going to be joining the disciples on the road to Emmaus, showing others the way. And what I love about these videos is I feel like it's an opportunity for us to imagine ourselves there. Imagine that journey. Imagine what it would be like walking back with your friend when one of your other friends who you loved, who you followed, who you saw do amazing things, didn't do what you thought he was going to do. Instead of being powerful and becoming like a king, he was put to death. He died. And now these two people, I like to think, are actually running away from the problems. They're getting out of Jerusalem. They're getting away from all the issues. They're going back to what they know, maybe with heavy hearts, because you can't deny the things you've seen. But what I love about the story is that when Jesus comes next to them, it said... 
that they didn't recognize who he was. They were kept from recognizing him. And what I like is that I feel like it shows us that we can be completely open with Jesus when we pray, when we talk to God. We can be completely open to him because the disciples were. They knew what was going on, but they struggled to believe it. Jesus then went through the Bible. He went through what we would call the Old Testament, pointing out where he is, where he fulfills the promises that God had made of saving us, of bringing us back to God, knowing his love. They spent so much time walking along the road, learning from Jesus about Jesus, yet not knowing Jesus. So we're talking about the game before. Where do you find out about people? How do you find out about people? As Vicky already shared, she finds out more than enough information about Arsenal when going for walks with Joel, which is a shame because it should be Man City. And, um, oh, sorry, Joel. Or I find it when I'm taking, uh, taking Stanley to nursery in the back of the car, that's when I suddenly realize that Stanley listens to a lot more things than I realize. Things I say, the music I listen to, turns of phrases. For example, come on, Stanley, get out of the car. Just two ticks, Daddy. Two ticks. As if I say that. But the reality is the time that we spend walking with people, walking with people to work, to college, to school, doing the school drop-off, it's sometimes where you get to find out more about what's going on in their life. Actually setting time aside or using the time wisely. I've heard stories of the youth weekend away. I've, I've done the 18 to 25 weekend away as a speaker. Um, and again, it's the walks where it's the time to chat with one another, to get to know somebody. I was chatting to my parents about um, basically spending time together and when they chat. And my parents are um, technically empty nesters. That's the fancy word. That means all the children have left to their delight. So it's just them two in the house all day. And I thought, well, this is a bit of a silly question. But then they said that they love coming to visit me in Lincoln and Becca and my children, obviously, but probably me more. <laughs> Maybe. Because they get to drive over the Humber. And there's just that moment where they're going over the Humber and they can just see for miles. And they're both facing forward. And they said that's when they get to find out what's going on. What's going on for mum at work? How my dad's meant to be retired but keeps getting more jobs? All these weird things that are going on. But they use that time to find out what is going on. I found out when I was trained to be a vicar, we actually do a whole session on pastoral care. That's why I'm so good at it. (laughs) But the idea is, it's how do you listen to others? How do you show that you care about what they're whinging about or what they're pouring out to you? I'm only kidding. What I found fascinating is that instinctively, you want to sit opposite somebody to see how they're doing. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. And that's kind of where it ends. But what we found and what we learned is that actually that kind of sitting next to each other, standing next to each other, washing up next to each other, driving next to each other is where people are way more open. I actually took Mario Kart with me to the sixth form college where I used to work in Manchester. And I found out so much stuff from the students when I was smashing them at Mario Kart because we were focusing on one thing in front of us and we were able to talk. So if that's how we respond and we are with people around us, how do we spend time with Jesus? How do we invite him into a conversation? How do we join him in a conversation? How do we eat and recognize him in our day-to-day lives? Some things are really practical, like giving thanks for the food you're about to eat. But other times you might be eating in the things around you, taking it in the beauty in nature. You see, in the passage for today, the disciples ended up taking a walk with Jesus, not realizing who it was. But the fact is they could open up to him and he joined them. 
And it's not till he breaks the bread until he's about to walk off. Sorry, before he walks off and breaks the bread that they don't realize who he was. And for me, that's a challenge between the head and the heart. And what I mean by that is that in your head, you might think you understand what it means to have a relationship with God, with Jesus. But actually, he wants our hearts. He wants us to know him and to love him because he loves us. So are we taking time to walk with Jesus and let him reveal who he is in our lives? I struggled with this first question because I love to read. I'm currently reading a book on Exodus and I love it. I love all the little details and all the way that this thing mirrors this thing and that means this and symbolism and it's all beautiful and wonderful. But the fact is, when am I taking time to walk with Jesus in that? You can't just do one. I believe you can't just do one. I remember when I went to Romania and I got to go with YWAM. And that's a missionary group who go out and they serve the children who are on the streets. They help run an orphanage. And I was chatting to one of them about, well, probably didn't surprise you. I was like, what's your favorite book of the Bible? Basically, because I wanted to show off my knowledge of the Bible. And he kind of gave some throwaway comment like, I like all of it. And I was a bit disappointed. But then he started to talk to me about how he prays. I just want to share this with you. How can you take time with Jesus? And he says that he would go out for a coffee with Jesus. So he would go out just on his own, knowing Jesus is with him, and have a coffee, have a drink, just sit at a table on his own or sit at a bench on his own. And he also said, this is, I'm just sharing funny tips that I really like and I still use now. Another tip was to pray while holding your phone to your ear. If there's one thing you've already got on you, or always have on you usually, is a phone. And he just said that sometimes when he was scared, or if he'd been to a really tricky situation, like we got to visit one mum who shared a bed with seven children, and it was really heartbreaking, really hurt us. And he would go on his phone and just pray to Jesus just a way to actively be speaking to him. And then the flip side of that is how are we helping one another walk with Jesus? How are we getting alongside each other in this church? How are we getting alongside people outside of this church? Some of you will already know, and if you don't, you should find out that we've had midweek groups and I've absolutely loved being able to bring people together who've had different experiences of who Jesus is. Experiences I could never have. People who are older than me, wiser than me, people who've had totally different experiences can reveal something of Jesus to me that I just haven't seen before. What about offering prayer when somebody shares some news? Good news or bad news? I do believe, just like in the story, Jesus wants to be alongside us in everything we do. But there is an invitation Jesus, if you remember in the story, was about to carry on walking. But the disciples invited him to join them, to reveal who he was. And then, of course, I think it's just the evangelist in me, as we all are, is that we have the opportunity to invite people along to the midweek groups, along to Alpha that will be starting in May. An opportunity to come together and to share what the Christian faith is, what it means to be filled and to live by the Holy Spirit, to be able to see lives transformed. Just this past um, course that we've done, we've had people from very interesting backgrounds coming to faith, finding Jesus is alive and walking with them. And what's great is that it hasn't just stopped with him. He is now going out telling people about Jesus. He's now going out showing others the way of Jesus. So there are the two questions for you this week. How are you taking time with Jesus to reveal who he is in your own life? And how are you helping others walk with him? So can I invite you to stand, if you're able, as we spend some time listening to what God wants to say to us about showing others the way.
let's pray. You might want to just put your hands out in front of you just as a sign of, God, I'm open to you. I'm open to you walking alongside me. I'm open to you revealing more about who you are in my life. Let's listen to the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus, would you reveal to each one of us this morning something about who you are? Was just looking towards the back and struck by the image of Trudy crouching down just to be alongside someone and to uh, to listen to them. And it reminded me of a Bible verse where um, it says that um, God stoops to listen. He stoops down to listen to us. And I don't know where you might need him to stoop down and listen to you and walk alongside you now, but um, if there's some area that you just need to know more of him stooping near as you walk with him, then we'd love to pray for you. Maybe there's an area of your life that you just really want him to, um, to listen as you pour that out to him, or you really want him to speak into. And uh, we're just going to invite our pairs of ministry team to go and just stand towards this side and towards the back and towards this side here. And we'd love to pray with you this morning if those questions that Ben said resonate with you. Where do you need Jesus to reveal more of himself to you? Or where do you want to... Um, introduce others to him. Maybe you've just got a little stirring in your heart of, yeah, I really want to see that person come to walk alongside Jesus. And again, you can get the team to go and pray with you. So we're going to worship. We're going to continue waiting on the Holy Spirit. You can hear from him exactly where you're standing as we worship. But also, if you want someone to, to pray with you and draw alongside you, then uh, do go to these people around the room and just ask for them to, um, to join you in prayer and to ask for Jesus to reveal himself a little bit more in those areas of your life where you want to hear him more. Let's worship. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
as we wait, we give you space to fill our hearts and minds today. As we wait, we give you space to come. God, we draw Open our ears, open our hearts, we want to know you. Open our ears, open our hearts to see you. God, will you draw me? suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to live one cry then from north to south and east to west we'd hear Christ be magnified with a whole earth that we examine his name would burst from sea and sky, from rivers to the mountain tops. We'd hear Christ be magnified. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let His praise arise. Christ be magnified. creature finds its immortality and 
every year And then he won in raptured him Of praise we'll sing Christ be magnified be magnified let his praise arise Christ be magnified in me oh Christ be magnified from the altar of my life Christ be magnified in me oh Christ oh Christ be magnified let his praise arise Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. Well, we're going to pray now. Um, you can stay standing if you like. Um, but thinking of the disciples walking along the road with Jesus, their hearts were sad and they were downcast. They weren't quite sure what was going on. And we're going to think about Jesus walking alongside us. We're going to pray into that now. If it's helpful for you, then you might want to um, take that paper and pen that's on the chair and draw around your foot. But if it's um, not something, if, you, if you'd rather um, maybe close your eyes or um, focus on your own feet, then you can pray in that way. Let's take a seat because it's tricky to draw around your foot whilst you're standing on one leg. But let's carry on in that attitude of prayer. So if you want to quickly draw around your foot, it might not fit on there, or draw a foot on a piece of paper, then you can do that and we can use it to pray. But um, let's think of those situations where we might um, walk along and which might make us feel downcast, which might make us feel sad. Maybe something that's going on in the world. Maybe you see something on the news which makes you feel really sad. Maybe it's something in your own life which makes you feel sad and confused. And maybe you just want to jot it down on that piece of paper inside the foot shape, just to say, Lord Jesus, I want you to draw alongside me in those things that make me feel sad. I want you to walk with me and reveal who you are in those situations. So you can either draw a foot on the paper and jot something down, or you can just write a few words down or you can just hold those things in your mind. Let's pray together now. So, Lord Jesus, we think of situations maybe in our world, maybe in our own lives, maybe in our city, maybe at our workplace. Those things that make us feel sad and where we want you to draw and walk alongside us and reveal who you are in those situations. Lord, we just sang Christ be magnified and we know that you are all powerful and you are all loving. And we pray that you would come and reveal who you are in those situations and you would bring change. Amen. And now thinking of um, other people who we'd like to know walking alongside Jesus. Maybe you've got a friend who you've been praying for for a while, who you'd love to come to know Jesus. Maybe you've got someone at the back of your mind who you'd like to invite to try church or to try Alpha. Or maybe you've got a friend who's going through a tough time and you want them to know Jesus walking alongside them, whether they know him or not. So maybe just jot that friend's name down now on the paper. Ben's question was, who are we showing others how they can walk with him? Who are we showing others um, who Jesus is? So let's write that name down and let's pray for them now. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you that um, just as we can walk with you, we can also, also show others how to walk with you. And we pray for these people now that you would help us to be walking alongside them, drawing alongside them and showing them who you are. 
we pray that they would come to know more of your goodness in their lives. Amen. We're going to carry on praying for our church as Ben leads us in the words that are going to come on the screen. So we say it together. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our options, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's gather all our prayers together with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sing our final song together in a moment. During this song, our offerings also going to be taken. And uh, we give to the work of the church so that we as a church can show um, more people what it means to walk alongside Jesus. And there's loads of stories during the week of Love Your Neighbor Cafe and Baby Chinos and Stay Toasty. Lots of things that go on which help show other people who Jesus is, which we do as a church. So if you'd like to be part of that, if you'd like to be part of given then two buckets are going to come round one of them is uh, empty and you can pop cash in there if you like to give in that way another one's got a little tappy machine in and also some cards which if you want to be part of regular giving at St Swithin's you can take one of those cards and fill it in and it just shows you how to do that and then we've also got our love your neighbor bin at the front if you've brought practical food items that you want to pop in that bucket so let's stand together and uh, let's bring our worship to Jesus in our final song and in our giving. There's some actions to this song. Get ready to uh, stand up high and get down low and uh, join in if you like. So this song's called Alive because Jesus is alive. That's what we're celebrating. So this is what we're going to worship to go out with together as a church. Let's go.
Jesus, you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love, never ending. Oh, oh, oh. Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love, never ending. Oh. You are alive in us, nothing can take your place. You are all we need, your love has set us free. You are alive, you are alive in us, nothing can take your place. You are all we need, your love has set us free. Whoa. Wow. Well, that brings us to the end of our service today. We would absolutely love to talk to you afterwards, just to say hi if you're new. But also, if you want to come and join the Actions team, then we are very much in need of people to come and do that because multitasking's hard, isn't it? And yeah, and, and worship leaders. Excellent. Great. Let's pray together as we end our service. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that um, whether we're in this building, whether we're out at work, whether we're on school holidays, whatever we are up to, that you walk with us. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would show us more of who you are and where you're at work in our lives this week. Amen. Amen. And so I pray for all of us this coming week. As we go out, we follow the way of Jesus, knowing he is with us. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. amen. We will see you next week.